around 700 Indian students are facing the risk of deportation from Canada. You might have already seen this news in the last one month or so because even the mainstream media is covering it. 700 Indian students in Canada who face deportation in that country are facing possible deportation back to Punjab. So in this video we'll be discussing in detail about what really happened here, why the Indian students are facing this risk of deportation, what went wrong, what is the Canadian government saying about it, an in-depth analysis about this very important matter. If you have dreams or plans to move to Canada down the line, then this video is very important for you because you need to ensure that you take certain steps so that you don't face this problem going further in the future. So don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Okay, so let's see what really happened here. So many of these students actually applied their visas around 2017 and 18. Back then, they applied the visa, the visa got approved. After that, they came to Canada, they completed their studies. They got the work permit as well. And when they were filing their PR, then it was spotted by the Canadian officials that their college admission letters, which they submitted for their study visa back in 2017-18, those were fake. Of course, this was a big enough reason for them to take big action. And CBSA actually sent them letters of deportation, which meant that starting the mid of June, these students would need to be deported out of Canada back to India. The number of such students was huge, around 700. They started some demonstrations around it. Of course, they did not want to get deported. Even the mainstream media started covering it and it even got the attention of the Canadian government. We'll get to that part in the second half of the video, but let's just try to understand the story a little bit deeper. When I heard this story for the first time, I was not really able to believe it because, of course, this college admission letter is not the letter which they show at the airport and they enter Canada. So this letter is given to ICC at the time of the study visa. The ICC officials scrutinize these letters. After that, when these international students enter Canada, at the airport, the CBSA officials scrutinized these letters. The students also got the work permit as well. So there was another check there. So three checks missed. And in the fourth check, it was found that these letters were fraudulent. So of course, this can't be as simple. I was trying to do my research around it. I stumbled upon an article on the star. There they interviewed one of these students. And he said that to get the study visa, they contacted an agency. The agency provided him an admission letter from Fanshawe College for his student visa application and he entered Canada with the document. However, his agency staff in India then called him upon his arrival in Canada to tell him that he didn't need to go to campus because the school's business management program was full. They refunded his parents the deposit for one semester's tuition fee. Instead, he scrambled to find a school that was accepted by St. Lawrence College in a similar program. After completing the 16-month diploma program, the man who now works at the warehouse said he received a three-year postgraduate work permit in January 2020. So now the story is making much more sense. The students contacted an agency. They provided them with a letter. That letter must have looked so legitimate that even the students and the Canadian officials got fooled multiple times. Of course, if it was a fake letter, then those colleges wouldn't have accepted these students as well. But reading all of this, it makes sense around this complete story, how it actually went ahead. So these students actually are claiming that they had no clue about this fraudulent letter. And of course, they had no intention of providing that fraud or fake letter to the Canadian government. And that is the reason why it is the agency that should be blamed. And of course, their career, their life here in Canada should not be put at stake and they should not be deported. So because of the visible and unignorable demonstrations by these Indian students, it got the attention of Indian and Canadian media. And because of which the politicians got involved, it got a lot of attention from different political parties. So of course it did got the attention that it deserved from the Canadian government as well. And last week, Sean Fraser, the immigration minister has told that the deportation of these students would be put on hold which does not mean that they won't be deported. So what's going to happen next is that uh, the Canadian government will build a task force. They'll go on case by case basis. They'll try to identify if 
the students actually knew about these fake letters beforehand and if the students are able to justify that okay they had no role to play in this uh, fraudulent activity then they might get a chance to stay back here in Canada and maybe if in any particular case they find that the student already knew about it and then he came here knowing that he is doing that fraudulent activity then of course they might take strict action and they might even deport that student. So this might depend from case to case basis. The risk of deportation still exists. Just that the risk of deportation has been put on hold for some time. These students won't be deported right away. Of course the task force would talk to each of these students and depending on the case to case basis they'll take those decisions. I hope that most of these students actually get to stay here in Canada. Most of them even if they get away with this situation somehow, until they get that final decision, they would still be a lot worried. And that could be, you know, maybe a few months from now. We don't know, maybe an year. Now, big catch here. In the study visa application, it wasn't mentioned that they're being represented by any agency. So all the mistake is on their own. Because this matter is uh, blown out of proportion, probably that is the reason why you no, know, probably there would be an investigation for this particular matter. But this matter is kind of an eye opener for all of you out there who really want to move to Canada. Being from India, I understand that there are so many agents, consultancies out there, especially in Punjab, who claim to get you a visa very easily. Even if your visa has been rejected before, they claim that yes, they can get you the visa. They even may be able to get you that visa, but then later on some time you might get caught. So if you have any idea about a fraudulent activity which is being done by your agent, please do not proceed with that agent. Your entire life and career might be at risk. I keep talking to many people and sometimes I get asked this question that, that particular agency is offering us an LMIA letter for 15 lakh, 20 lakh rupees. Should we get that? Never, never ever purchase these letters. First of all, these jobs, these LMIA letters and other letters as well are not out for auction, not for sale that you can go and purchase. But consider this as your good luck that that agent actually offered you that because that's a red flag right there. You should understand right away that that consultancy or agent is a fraudulent one. Always, always try to stay away from them. Couple of years ago, I made a detailed video on these red flags, how you can actually identify that a consultant or a immigration lawyer is legitimate. What are these red flags? How to identify them? If you don't have too much knowledge about this complete process, I'll provide the link to that video in the description box below. Please check it out. But guys, please be very careful. This is a scam out there. Please don't fall for it. This is for your own benefit, for your own life, for your own career. That's it for this video. I hope and pray for all of these students and same for all of you guys as well. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any comments, any feedback, please put it down in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.